Hey guys, and welcome to uh, Hex of Steel with me, Time and Tactics. This game is developed by a single developer. I think his name is Valentin Lievre, French. And I'm playing version 5.6.10 right now. It's an early access, but it is actually um, very playable, and it's being updated a lot. Every day, it seems like there's a new update, so very active. In the game, we have the various options. We can uh, play around with the editor, create our own maps. There are mods available that we can, well, the workshop, Steam Workshop, is available for the game. And in the actual game itself, there's multiplayer, campaigns, or quick games. Quick games is a way to get a random scenario going, or we can pick something that's already uh, selected for us here. Now, in this case, I'm going to pick the tutorial map. So it's all the way down at the bottom here of the maps. And if you pick that one, you'll find that it's a small map, 20 by 10, but it has a lot of different units that lets you try out different things on the map. Let's go ahead and select that. You can play as Germany or Soviet Union. I think playing as Germany is going to be a little bit better, more options for our units, more different, I mean, different types of units. And we're gonna be the first one to start the game, or we're gonna be the one to start the game. And that's pretty much all we have to do here. Let's jump into the game. And here's the informational blurb from Valentin. And here's the game. The game looks really good and it's very smooth. Looks really good. I mean, I really like it a lot. The fact you can zoom in all the way to here is, is great for immersion, I think. Now, what are we looking at here? Well, first of all, we have 30 turns here. We're on turn one right now. Let's go to our objectives though and take a look at them. We have to fulfill our duty before turn 30. So we have to basically complete it before turn 30. What do we have to do? Well, we have to capture all major victory points. There are seven. We hold three right now. And you can see them on the map. If you go to a victory location, which is the flag, and you look at the outline, the outline is gold, that means it's major. If it's silver, it's a secondary one. And if it's uh, gray, it's just a normal one. Going back here. And there we can see that we also need to hold the following tile, city at 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is here. How do I know that? Well, if you look up here, 0 uh, 0.5, 0 0.5. So we need to hold this one. Well, we probably will be able to do that. If we take all of the cities, all of the major ones, we should hold this one as well. So that shouldn't be a problem. But uh, how do we go about it? Well, we have a, a bunch of different units here. But also, very importantly, we can buy more units. We have 2,000 uh, money, gold here, or whatever you want to call it, dollars, that we can spend. And we are making 275 per turn based on uh, what we have on the map. If we want to, we can hide the units and then hold down forward slash. And you can see what type of locations we have on the map. Here is a town. There are two little buildings there. Here's a village. There is a city over here. There's a factory, refinery. Harbor, everything matters in the game for different purposes. Uh, there is a bridge over here. It'd be important to cross over. And there's another city over here and then an airport there. Okay, so that's that. Now, looking at the map though, let's go over our units first and take a look and see what they're all about. So we kind of get an idea of what we can do with them. By the way, to move around to WASD. Now, as you can probably tell, there's going to be land units. And there's going to be air units, and then also naval units, which we don't have any in this scenario. Okay, so looking at the map, we are now, well, we're kind of blocked by this river here, right? If we want to go over to take this major victory location, we have to cross the river. There's a road here, and there's a, probably a bridge there. Yeah, there's a bridge right there. We can cross over there. Right now we have a plane there, a Henschel 126, and uh, that's a... Um, and uh, a, uh, what do you call it? A scout, basically, in terms of the game. A scout plane is a plane that can uh, let you find where the enemy is. So it's probably a good range, but no real attack or defensive strength. So it's sitting there, well, it's flying, I guess, above the river. So how do we go about this? We have a couple units here. There's a fog of war here. These units look like infantry, right? If you want to, you can turn on NATO symbols. And I usually do that in games, but in this game, I feel with these sprites being so good, it really adds to the game. It, these are excellent. Really, really good. I like them a lot. Anyway, so we keep them on, I think, here. So what do we have here? Well, if you look at the box in the bottom here, 
across the river, we're facing off against a the first heavy infantry unit there. It's an infantry unit, as you can see by the helmet in this area. And it has a variety of stats. What do we select? One of our units, so we can actually, you can't select these. It kind of goes away when you don't hover over it. But for purposes of showing you what it's all about, let's go ahead and select this, our, uh, our unit here, a 10th heavy infantry unit. So if we select that one there, we can see that we have a number of stats here. And we have a few more on this side as well. But looking at the counter, we have a number of, un of values at the top. The top left is the attack strength of this unit when it's attacking soft targets, such as infantry, artillery, but not tanks. All right, so it's 40. That's pretty good. Then the middle number is their attack strength against tanks. And that would be 15, not as good. And then finally on the right is the number against air units. And that's zero. So they can't really attack any air units. We have to use, you know, our own air units for that. And down at the bottom of the, of the counter, uh, bottom right, we have a green number. That is the movement distance they can, movement points they have each turn. And it's three here in this case. Now each hex is not one, as you can see here. If in the top uh, left, if I move over to this area, that's a river, it takes one movement point. So that one is normal. If we have the ability to cross a river, that is. Over here, we have a thick forest, it takes three. We can only go one, um, one hex in this case, over there. We can't go here, even though it costs one, because this unit is not able to cross rivers. So that is the green number. The orange number is their attack range. In this case, a heavy infantry can only attack adjacent units one hex away. And then on the bottom left, we have a couple different symbols and values and, and colors. On the left, we have the, the morale. It's green. That's the best you can have. Once it goes down to gray, it's not as good, and then it goes down from there. With the green, we get a bonus modifier to our attack whenever we attack. With gray, you get nothing. And then from down from there, you get a negative modifier. To the right of that, we have a number, 100 in this case. Most units are 100 at the beginning of the game. That's their hit points, or health points, I think the game calls it. It can go down, and if it goes down, it kind of acts as a modifier to your uh, attack value. So if you have 50 here, this would only be 20. It would show up as 20 here. So you want to keep that high. That's very important. Once you reach zero, the unit is eliminated. And to the right of that, we have a red bullseye. That is... That indicates that they have not yet attacked. Once they have attacked this turn, it turns gray. And then under that, we have a green arrow. Yes, we have not moved yet. That's what that is. So that turns gray when we're done moving. That is the unit. Down here, we get a little bit more information. Here, you can see what they had at a glance, 40, 15, 0. That's these numbers. Visibility, 1. Attacking range, 1. And then the tile modifier right here for them is 5. That gives them extra defense. So if somebody attacks here, and they say they have 30, they are moved down or reduced by 5, so 25. This one here, we're attacking this one if they were next to it, because they have an attack range of 1 as well. Then they would only have 25. And then to the right, we can see hit points here. That's the health points. That's 100 there. We have 5 armor points. They also reduce any attack. And then we have ammunition, 10 out of 10, and fuel. Yeah, that's going to go down over time. We have to... Uh, spend time uh, refueling and rearming as time goes on. We haven't used any movement points yet, and we are dug in entrenchment level three here, which is good. That's going to give us a modifier to defending. That really gives you the, well, there's one more thing I want to show you. WASD to move. We can see here, this unit here has a horse here. That means it's horse drawn. That means it's going to move faster. And normally, there wouldn't be three in movement, I think, for this uh, for this unit, this artillery unit. So you can look at this one here, FH18. If we go to the store, we go to artillery pieces here. Oh, let me see if I can find it. Uh, do we have it here? This one. Yeah, this one here. If I select that and look on the right, you can see it has one movement point. But if I were to buy it with the horse toad capability, the cost goes up. But now we have three instead. We'll come back later to this screen when we buy something. And that would be pretty soon, I think. So we're going to be um, taking on this hex right here, I think. And then what else do we have here? One down here in the fog of war. But we have some parachuters here. Seventh from Jaeger, sixth and uh, ninth as well. They could probably fly in, but we got to be careful. If there is anti-air over there, it would be a problem. This one is not strictly necessary to take. We have two more over here. And uh, a large city. 
or a city and an airport. Nothing up here. There's also a railroad over here. Now the railroad is interesting because if we have, if we, well, any unit can transform and jump on the railroad and then travel on it, or we can buy a dedicated uh, train, armored train to go there. It doesn't look like it's that useful though. It goes up to this harbor up here and we don't have much, uh, you know, no, actually no naval units. So it doesn't really matter. There's some, um, there is a railroad here though. Looking at this now, look at this here. There's no river. I mean, there's there's a river. There's no bridge here, right? And we have a unit down here defending this uh, victory location, normal victory location. Doesn't really matter for this scenario. I kind of want to take advantage of them, but they only have three movement points. And going through the thin forest takes two. So we take two here. We'd have one left, but going to plane would take another two. So we round down, can't move. It might be better to travel on the train. Pretty safe, I would feel. Go up here. And then go by the road down over here and help out. Hmm. Now the problem is you can only have one unit in each hex, and there is a flak unit here. We're gonna hold this one here. I think what we could do is instead of having these here, this heavy infantry just sitting around, we could move them closer. They can get all the way to here. That would be tempting. See, it's um, it's uh, what is it? Motorized? No, it's motorized. Yeah. So it doesn't have any extra armor from that, but it's fast. Seven movement points there. So that's pretty good. I'm tempted to take it and move it right there. And then we could attack potentially. It's going to be an infantry unit, so it's good at uh, attacking other infantry uh, style soft targets. But that would be fine. There's no tank here. Let's go over there. Animation is good, by the way. I like it. Now, so he's done, except you can see here the green arrow is now gray. He can still attack, and he is over strength. He has 130. So his number normally would be something like 40. Yeah, probably this one here. Yeah, it's the same. You can see that one there. The 10th and the 1st. Yeah, he gets a little bit of a boost there because he has uh, over strength. So it's going to take longer to kill him off, and also he does more damage. Anyway, so we have those two there, and this symbol here indicates that there are other units there. Uh, in this case, air mode, we can go select this one. Now, we're sitting on the river. Not a great place, I think, to be here. I think you get a negative modifier if you're on the actual river, even if it's on the bridge. If we were to attack now, I select him. You can see which ones I can attack. I have a range of one. I can attack this one, and at a glance, you can see we would do 22 damage, but they would fight back and do 50 on us that's not good here we would do 26 only take 20. that is tempting right to get away from the screen just right click anywhere else so we want to keep that in mind but we have 2000 money dollars here let's call it dollars so i don't think i want to attack yet the game does support encirclement so if we can get more units closer to them like if let's say we want to attack this unit, if we encircle him here, we can do more damage. You know. But looking at this here, there is an artillery piece here. It's going to defend any of these. If I'm going to attack now, it doesn't say. But I believe this one will attack here. Uh, I think it will, even though it's behind. Oh, uh, well, yeah, I think it does. It has a, probably a range of, yeah, a range of three in the bottom right there, at the M1936. <clears throat> so it's going to be attacking there, I think. So maybe it's the best to take on this one first. That's an anti-tank here. Won't do anything there. So as long as I stay away from my tank units, be fine. Now there's one unit here that can move across the river, and that's the engineer. He is mechanized, so he's going to be quick. And also, if I keep him here, other units can cross over the river. They're building like a pontoon bridge. So you can say we can take this. See, we can take this one here. But I don't want to move this guy before we move, cross over with our um, scout vehicle here. The benefit of the scout vehicle is that, well, it can attack like anything else. But if you have it next to an enemy that you're attacking, anybody who's attacking that enemy gets an, a bonus attack strength of 5. Now, you can have not just scout cars, but also scout planes, like the one that we have over here. That's also the Henschel 126. It's also a scout plane. How do you know that? you got to go to the store to see it. If we go over here, there's the Henschel. It has that little symbol here, recon unit. So it's a recon. So we have the option, uh, we can take a look. There's a recon here, a cav unit. So it does give you a boost. By the way, you can the max you can get is a bonus of 10 if you have a, an air recon and a land recon. 
you can't have more than one of each to give you that boost. But I'm thinking we should take this one here. Move up there. We can maybe start wearing this one down. 29. He doesn't do any damage to us. What about this one? Yeah, move over here. And before we attack, we'll get everybody in position so we can get that encirclement bonus as well. I think that'd be a good idea. Now, we have three parachuters here. <clears throat> Let's not forget about them. And we do have this plane. There's an airfield here. It's awfully close. We have eight movements. We can put our units here. Or we'll go straight down to the airfield, but I have to believe that there's a unit here, right? On the airfield. So let's go ahead and get a little bit closer. One benefit of having recon units is that they get to move twice. So if we go down here, we can then, per turn, we can go down here maybe and then get away if there's something there and yeah because these are paratroopers we can only have one unit one air unit in a hex we have to get close maybe go straight on top ah, that seems a little bit well i guess it doesn't matter right because we can move twice let's go ahead and do that there might be a plane here that's possible well let's give it a shot okay so there's something there we can attack but don't don't do that with the recon place they can't do anything hit the tab what is this here? This is a 1938 76mm anti-air. Yeah, you can see that 23, and they're really good at attacking tanks, but not so much against infantry units. That's pretty good because we have the paratroopers, two regular ones and one overstrength. I'd say we drop them here. This is a major victory points anyway, so that's good. Let's go over here and drop them. So now we'll get to do, if I were to attack, we'll do 39 damage, take 17 ourselves. So, okay. Well, let's see if we can get improve those odds. We'll move this one over here. Now, if I select this one instead, 3912, because we're surrounding him, he can't do as much damage to us. He's being, uh, you know, um, occupied from multiple directions. Then we go over here as well and drop him as well. I think we have to do that down to seven. So that's pretty good. What do we get uh, here? Zero. So this one is in a better position here. In the thick forest, I guess, is what's giving us a boost there. Ten, yep, that's better. So we should start with this one attacking here. We have a plane there. The uh, Henschel is here, so giving us five. So this is really good odds. I feel this is something we should do right away. He has 100 now. If everything goes well, we should do 39 damage. Left click. Yep, that's all. Let me gain, do you see those two stars coming up? If I right click, I can see XP4 now. I gained two there. So that means we gained experience. We can use that later when we want to requisition more units if we lose uh, health points. You know, basically simulating that we are getting in green recruits, we're reducing our XP. But that's fine. I think that's fine. We're down to 61. Can we take him out in one turn? Maybe. See, now there's no damage from him because he's down to nine now in strength he's, he's 61 there is not helping him we'll attack there i think let's see this one would do 44 as well let's go ahead and attack with this one though i want to keep that 130 strong as for as long as i can let's go ahead and attack him plus two so he's good as well he's up to four what do we have here 62 now this unit has a lot of experience already okay if we attack here, 44, he should be eliminated, I would think. Let's go ahead and try it. Seven. He gained seven from that. Okay, that's good. We should let somebody else attack, actually, for that final kill, because that would have been more beneficial to have somebody with, you know, seven here instead, or nine, whatever. But I don't think I can take that uh, airfield just yet. They already attacked, and you can see by the little symbols there, they moved, everything is done. But we can move this one, the Henschel. Oh, where do we go? It's a little bit risky, but there is something there. Let's move up here and see. Okay, there is a, what is this here? Conscript. They're not going to be very good. Now, when it comes to buying units, which actually, I was going to buy a unit. Well, it still worked out okay here, but uh, I want to get a, a leader, a general. Anyway, um, when it comes to buying units, you can deploy them at different locations. In this case, there's a village. I think you can deploy conscripts, and I think the, the Russians or the Soviet Union, they have that ability to do it. It's overstrength. But um, um, normally, for the Germans, I think, we have to uh, 
rely on larger towns and cities to deploy. So we can't do that there. But anyway, let's, uh, we've attacked here. That seemed pretty good. Now, before we go on, let's do what I was thinking about doing, and that is to go to the uh, store. Now, the store has all the different categories of units here. And the one I'm looking at here, first up, is a general. So the generals are represented by a counter on the map, and they modify other units. And here's, I'm thinking Rommel in this case here. Look at Rommel here. He has 100 hit points. He can move around. Um, and he has attack strength and defensive strength. That's not for him to attack with. It's to boost anybody within range. What range is that? Seven hexes. So that's pretty good. Whenever we attack within seven hexes, any infantry unit will get 10, any tank would get 10. Air units will not get anything. He can move six as well. Um, so we can pick somebody else. You can compare that here. You can see this guy is um, you know, there. Hoth would get a reduction against tanks, only five, you know, so. But I think Rommel is pretty good. 1183, though, is a lot. I don't think a winter train will do anything for us. In this case, we'll take that out of 2,000. We're making 275 per turn, so pretty good. We'll take him. That's Rommel. We have money left, but let's buy him first. There. Now, he's selected. We can deploy him. Where can we deploy him? Well, looks like only in these two locations. Here. Well, three, I guess, these locations. The harbor, the city, and the factory. How do we know that? Well, if we go to the store again, we can look at them. Deployed medium cities, factories, and big cities. Okay, that makes sense. So we can deploy him here, and he has a range of seven. I think we can put him right here on the road. Let's do that. So seven. You can see how far he can go. Well, can we see it very well? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He can go to here. If I select him here, you can see that there. Yeah, that's the range he has. So if he stays here, he can then still support any unit here. I don't know if he's active this turn, though. It might be next turn. Yeah, anyway. So we crossed the river. We have not attacked yet, but we're going to attack. But how do we do it? We have an artillery unit here with a range of three. This number here. And as you can see, we can't go anywhere because everything is blocked here, right? We can't go here without having an engineer. We can't go here if somebody else is there. We can't go there. So we have to move somebody out of the way. Once we do, we can sneak across here into this area. So I'm thinking, go for this unit here, the artillery, the uh, M1936. And then we have the 1937 45mm anti-tank to take out. Then they would be vulnerable here. We can do that by taking advantage of the of the engineer. Now, before we move him, though, let's move this um, scout car. If I go up, I can go here. What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to figure out where do I put my scout car so it's next to an enemy that I can attack. Well, I think I can attack. Yeah, I can move here and attack this one. And if I have this so right now, we would do 33 damage. That is good. But I could take him, move him here. Right, I don't want to attack there yet. And then we'll take this one, move here. There. 44 now in damage. So if I attack there now, I don't know if I want to attack with him. I don't know if the... No, I don't think... It's a tank. This one is considered a tank, right? It would take a hit from this unit here, I think, if we were to attack there. Let's not do that. Let's go ahead and attack with the... Engineer, we don't do, uh, take any damage. And he had to retreat. Now that's good news. I can't move though. We could attack there. I don't want to do that. But that's fine. He moved away. Down to 56. See morale. Went down to yellow. Not gray. That means any attack we do now, he's going to take more damage. So we did an attack here. Now, let's not forget about our Air Force. Junkers 87. We have Messerschmitt. 109E, and that will be a fighter. You can see the symbol there. And this one is a, well, what did a gamer call it? They call them um, light bomber, and then strategic or heavy bomber. Okay, so we can take this one. As you can see, it's not that good against air units, but that's fine. We have a Messerschmitt right there that can defend it, you know, stay close to it. But we also have a unit up here. Fuck the Wolf uh, 200 Condor. If we take this one, it's a heavy bomber, and the heavy bomber ignore armor. Now, armor, if you look at armor here, 
This one has 20, this one has 15. If I select this one, range is great on this one. By the way, this one is also a recon unit. Right over there, as you can see. So that's going to be uh, helpful. If I take that one, uh, Rommel will not help us with this, but if I take him and attack here, we do 11 damage, and here we do 11. He does 11 across the board. It's not going to kill anybody. But something to keep in mind, I think, I could be mistaken, I think that these strategic bombers will reduce the entrenchment value of any unit. And we have, for this unit, we have three. I'm looking at this number down here. Yeah, the little shovel. Three. So we want to reduce that before we attack with anybody else. If I attack now, we take 50 damage. It's not fun. Here, much better odds. So maybe we should do something about this one, and then we could maybe attack there as well. We take 51, though. That is too much. That is too much. Let's go ahead and take this unit. The reason I want to take him first is because he can move away as a recon unit. He can move away after he has attacked. He can move twice. Move down here. And then we'll do a bombing run. Okay, let me see. Hit tab. He has two now in his entrenchment value there. This one. Down to 89. Let me move him away. And as you can see, he's taken a little bit of ammo there, a little bit of a fuel. Uh, but we're going to use him again, but maybe move him home. And by home, I mean move up by the airport. Oh, I can't. Got to be on the airport or next to it. Uh, I can't get there either. Okay. Hmm. What if we move away a little bit, though? We'll get up as close as we can. I don't know if that really matters. I have to think about what we're going to do, because we can, you know, have our Messerschmitt close to any of our air assets and, you know, protect them. But yeah, what do we do? We have a Junkers 87 here. If I take him, see, it will do 19, but here we'll do, well, we can't get in there. Okay, why don't we do this? We'll take this Condor, move him over here, right? Next to, we're gonna leave him there. We'll take this one, 87R, move him down here. Now, we can't move him, he gained experience. He did his move, he only has one. There it is. It's still, it's down to 76 now, pretty weak. But now, if we take our Messerschmitt and move down here, here, we protect both of these. I think that's pretty good. Yeah, let's do that. We'll stay there. Okay, now, if I'm to attack, if I take this one, mm, 32, it's not as bad. What about if I take, <clears throat> what if I take this unit? 44 normally, yeah, that's not bad. 31 damage, we only take nine. I think it's worth it. Yep, that happened, so he's down low now. Can we attack here reasonably? We can, I think we should. He's down to 28. So if we can eliminate him, that'd be helpful, I think. Okay, so we've done a good first job here. What I should have done though, Thinking about it, I could have attacked here first. That meant that we would have taken less damage. Now he's down to two in entrenchment value. I don't know if the artillery will uh, reduce entrench entrenchment. Let's see. One, it does. So I should have done that first because he got a boost to entrenchment when I attacked here. Hmm, gotta remember that, right? Okay, we moved him or we attacked with him and nobody else can really do anything here, I don't think, not yet. If we can take this one out, we can move in here and establish supply line through. You got to have a supply line back to your cities if you're going to be resupplying with uh, ammo and and um, people and whatnot. This one here, though, let's send him up. Actually, let's take this unit, move him into the city, and then we'll take this one here, go up to the factory. That's going to be a little bit closer anyway. Yeah, we'll switch him over to uh, train. And now we can go, you can see him right there. He can go all the way up here. Great. So he's done. Rommel can't move. We can just look at the um, green arrows. We have a flak. You know what? I might want to keep him here. I was going to say, we can move him down maybe, but he's on the airport. If the enemy has planes, which I assume he would have some, being Soviet Union, I'm assuming they're going to have a lot of infantry, not so many tanks, but they will have some planes, right? If we move him down here, we could maybe support these units that were to be attacked, but 
yeah, I don't know if that would help much. Probably leave him there. These units are probably too far away, and I kind of want to hold this here. I don't want to lose it up here, you know. They just drop some paratroopers or whatnot there. Maybe it's unlikely, but still. So we moved here. Everything is moved. Do we want to get another unit? We have 817. We're making a lot every turn. So if I were to buy something, what would it be? Well, keep in mind where you can deploy your units. We can deploy here if we owned it. We're going to have to deploy back here, maybe up here if we have an air unit. What does that mean? Well, I do like the engineers. Because we can have them uh, ferry units across, but it's going to take a while, right? Let's have you deploy here. They're going to have to come across. It's going to take a while. Now, one benefit that we haven't talked about is that that's a trench here. The trench is great. It gives you more defensive ability there. But if you have a unit with the flamethrower and an engineer is such a unit, that will reduce this uh, strength by 15. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, we haven't taken this airport yet, but once we take it, we could then deploy some air units there. So maybe we'll wait and get another air unit because next turn I would move in here. We'll have to wait, I think, one turn. It doesn't say here, but I think it varies depending on you know the size of what you're taking. Airport one turn, village one, town two, uh, cities three, something like that anyway. So I can't really move these around very much. I can't get across, as you can see. I can go back, but I don't want to do that. What else? And that's about it. Yeah. So let's probably call it good for this turn. I think we'll, that's what we'll do. And then we have to move down the road. We can't do anything with him. Nope, we can't. And then eventually end up over here. But I'll have to do it for this time, guys. I'll come back. We'll continue with this scenario and see what we can do to push the uh, Russians or the Soviet Union east, I guess.